me and Wade grew up together uh, since we were kids. We ran away from home around the same time, so we kind of just, uh, we bonded uh, just looking out for each other and taking care of each other in a, the best we could knew how. I saw Wade. I saw death for the first time. He was completely blue. Not just his lips, his, his entire body. I didn't think I was gonna be able to do anything. I was, I was completely terrified I lost my best friend. You're tied to it. You're married to it. You're, it's your wife, it's your life. It's nothing else matters. Days blend together. You can't hold down a job. It's a terrible way to live. It, it sucks any level of hope out of you, any level of worthiness out of you, and you stop fighting for yourself. As much as there was pain and problems and worry about Pete, there was more laughter. There was more excitement. There was more potential. He was hysterically funny and he had this really warped sense of humor and he completely entertained me. He was a young man who had a loving family who really did no harm in his life whatsoever. He was the apple of my eye and he's the best thing that ever happened to me. And um, it shouldn't have happened. I got a phone call at 4.20 in the morning on December the 23rd, and they said, come down to the hospital quick, something bad's happened. I said, is Pete okay? And they said, come down quickly. And I said, is Pete okay? Our Christmas was planning a funeral putting the pictures together. Boxing day was visitation. That's the first day I saw my son in his coffin. The funeral was on the 27th and Pete never got to get any of his Christmas gifts. There's a conception of what an addict looks like, uh, their worthiness. Pete was worth saving. You know, that just because he was struggling with, with mental health and addiction does not make him any less worthy of life. I feel like I'm starting over again. I feel like I've wasted my entire life, which is not a good feeling at all. I don't know where to go from here, but I know I don't want to be an addict anymore. My number one thing right now is to get better and uh, be clean so I can flow back into society and, and hold down a job and, and just be normal. I just want a normal life like anyone else. People need to really look at their biases and their discriminations. They don't realize that they're actually categorizing and judging and, and demeaning people and that may cost somebody their lives. naloxone would have stopped the overdose. There was lots of time to intervene and that would have saved his life. It devastates me that 11 years later, people are still dying and they're still dying at quite an alarming rate. First, I started with chest compressions. Um, which didn't seem to have any real great effect. And then I scurried through my apartment trying to find my Narcan. And then I gave him a shot of Narcan in his thigh. He took a huge breath of air. It sounded like uh, somebody drowning that just, just got to the top of the water. At that point, I knew things would probably be all right. Relief, to be honest, um, was probably the, what I felt the most because uh, I knew my best friend wasn't dead. 
the ambulance attendant uh, said he wouldn't have made it to the hospital if he hadn't been some treated where he was. It was only uh, three days beforehand that I was uh, trained with the Narcan. I thank God that I had that training and um, was able to do something about the situation. If somebody is using a high dose of opioids, it'll put them into withdrawal really quick, which won't be comfortable for them, but hello, they'll be alive. So there's, there's no dangers with it. There's a lot of people around me that wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Meloxin or Narcan. If you're dead, you're not gonna get better. I have a voice. I didn't have a voice when Pete was sick. For the first time in my life, I have a voice. Unfortunately, it's because Pete died, but I have a voice. I think it's important for addicts to have Narcan because we're the first responders before the ambulance, before the police, before anybody. We can save each other.